G'day guys, uh, we've got a bit to get through this afternoon. Um, yeah, it's an exciting time of the year. Things are starting to uh, to happen as far as finals go, so it's certainly with the women, but we're not getting far away from the men's finals as well. So yeah, good time of year to be involved and uh, the weather on Saturday certainly felt like finals. Um, got some milestones this week. 50th game for Maddie Jakes in the field, Cliff Vanderpold in the field, James Haskell in the boundary, Miller Jolly on the boundary, and we've got a 400 gamer. So Steve Pringle, obviously one of our uh, well-known field umpires, is reaching the 400 game milestone. So well done, Steve. Uh, got a, a couple of things about red cards. So just um, a reminder for a lot of you, but just to make sure that you're uh, all clear. Um, essentially, um, any appointed umpire, so that's field boundary or goal, has the ability to report a player for an offence during a game, whether they're league umpires or club umpires. Um, Non-running uh, league umpires are officials of the league and they can um, also issue a report of the president of the game and witness something that the officiating umpires didn't see. Um, if the reports by a boundary goal or non-officiating umpire, um, the officiating field umpires that have been notified of the report at the next break in play, um, the officiating field umpires can choose to issue a red card at that time, uh, which would then mean that the player is sent off and cannot be replaced for 10 minutes. Um, if you as a field umpire have sort of doubts about the red card, um, then you don't have to make the player come off or um, be be um, or have the team play a player short for ten minutes. But regardless, um, whether you have doubts or not, you'll you'll need to put into officials HQ the details of the red card so that the league can follow up during the week. Um, any questions or comments on any of that? Um, just a reminder for some of you that perhaps haven't been in the league that long with uh, um, who can report um, and what the process is. Um, further reminder, I think I do this every year, at least a couple of times, um, and I'll put it in the coaching notes. The When you do have a red card, in most cases, you're going to be asked for whether it's careless or intentional, it's pretty obvious. Um, whether it's high or body, so whether it's, you know, uh, to the head, then it's high, if it's to the, um, below the shoulders, it's to the body. Um, and the one that I particularly want to focus on is the impact. And you can rate it as low, medium, high or severe. The tendency for most umpires to make a report sound legit is to make it a higher impact than it actually is. That's what often tends to happen. Um, but the impact guidelines, which are really clear, um, are that if they're for, for low impact, um, the description is minimal or no impact on the player. The player continued to play the majority of the match and suffered no or minimal ongoing issues. So a thing that I often get is umpire reports and then they put it into the system as um, medium, high, severe, um, when it should be low. Um, there, is a, there is a note at the bottom of the guidelines, um, the impact can be categorised at higher where there is potential to cause serious injury. So if, you, if you're thinking that it needs to be higher than what the, the guidelines say, give us a call before you put it in because um, I do get a little bit sick of having to go back to the league office and say, no, it's not as high as what they said. Um, and so if you, if you run to the guideline that they get up, they play on, uh, it's low impact, um, usually that's um, where it should sit. And it is really important that we get these um, ratings right because that's what impacts the um, amount of weeks that the player gets suspended for. So again, if you've got any queries, just give me a call before you input it into the system. Uh, all right, I want to touch on grand final eligibility. So um, for field umpires, it is. If you're a boundary or a goal umpire, you're um, very likely to get a grand final with the numbers that are required. But um, uh, as those of you who have been on the panel for a while would know, normally I have some guidelines to give you an indication of uh, whether you're being looked at for a grand final. Um, so to be guaranteed a grand final this year, field umpires must have umpired at least 10 
Adelaide Footy League games, uh, must have been appointed to at least one division, one, two or three men's game. Must have paid their umpires association membership by the end of July. That's a key one. And I know a few of you still have to do that. Um, I'll send out a list of who has joined and who hasn't with the coaching notes. Uh, and the final one's performed to a satisfactory level in both the minor and major round. Um, normally I have a training requirement, but because of COVID this year, um, that's not part of the criteria. Um, I've also just want to make a mention that umpires who spent a considerable amount of time umpiring competitions outside the Adelaide Footy League this year who fulfilled these requirements will still be appointed to a grand final, um, but they may not end up in the grade they as high as they otherwise would be. So if you spent half the year doing sample W or you spent a lot of time in independent schools, um, it's great that you've helped out the other league, but I just think when it comes to our grand finals, it's not fair that uh, those particular umpires would perhaps get a priority over uh, the umpires that have committed to their low footy league all year round. So um, that's going to be a consideration. Um, coaches and other umpires may be appointed if there's a need, but there's no guarantee. Um, but we do get umpires um, become unavailable, injured, uh, all sorts of reasons. So there is a chance that if you don't fill the criteria that I've talked about there, that you still will be considered for a grand final. Um, but it yeah, just depend on the um, availability. Uh, the only um, absolute non-negotiable is that you are an umpires association member. Um, female umpires who have umpired women's footy all year will be given special consideration for women's grand finals. Um, we really want to um, reward the, the women that have come on board this year. We've got some really good new female uh, field umpires that have been doing women's um, games all year round and um, I want to uh, look to reward those um, ladies if possible. Um, and unless there's extraordinary circumstances, a field umpire will only be appointed to one grand final. So we'll try and share it around. Um, now for those umpires appointed to women's preliminary finals, which are on this weekend, for divisions two, two reserves, division four and division six, uh, they're playing, being played at Mitchum Oval this Saturday. Um, it is going to be a paid entrance um, for spectators. So this year, the, um, the way that you get in for free as an umpire is you'll be given a wristband. Um, I'll be giving them out on this Wednesday night. If there's no way you can get there on Wednesday night, we'll work out some other way of getting them to you. Um, I think it's, I'll confirm it, but it's, I think it's children under 16 getting in free. So if you're a, uh, an umpire point of those games, you're under, you're under 16, um, you can use the wristband for your parent. Um, I mentioned it before, I'm going to uh, include a current list of umpire association members in the coaching notes. Um, really encourage you, if you haven't yet done so, to, to pay the membership fee, not just because you're eligible to be to get a grand final, but just because it's the right thing to do to support the umpire association. Um, and, you know, I'll provide the link, just a reminder again. Uh, the last point... Uh, skill drills, first and second year field umpires will have skill drills this Wednesday night. So if you're one of those umpires, bring along your whistle to training. So a bit to get through there. Um, any questions or comments on any of that? Anything from the weekend that anyone wants to raise? No? All right. If not, we'll jump into the coaching video. So um, coaching video is been put together by Shane Harris again. Um, this one's on react to what happens. So the basic message here is don't go looking for free kicks, pay the obvious and blatant, protect the ball player, all the philosophies that we normally talk about. Um, some pretty simple messages that we tend to uh, repeat week after week, um, but um, worth reminding uh, you guys of. So, okay. Let's just scroll down and see whether I can pick on someone I haven't picked on before. Uh, is that Cliff Vanderpoel? I don't reckon I've asked you, mate. 50 Gamer. Yeah. 
What do you got? The scarf on there. You're cold. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that a crow scarf? Correct. Ah, nice. I like to see supporters uh, who support their team if, even if they're struggling. All right. Here you go, mate. You got uh, example number one. All right, what do you reckon? Sure. I didn't see much here. I just saw a jerky picture. Um, <laughs> All right, I'll play for you again. I, I get Thanks. that Zoom sometimes uh, isn't as clear. What do you reckon? Sorry, I, I couldn't see it. Well, why don't you do what you do on weekends and just guess the free kick? <laughs> <laughs> Joke. I wasn't meaning that at all. Uh, any, any idea, Cliff? No. No idea. All uh, right. Mark Goods, you want to jump in? Uh, sure, Colin. Uh, but I, I have to give Cliff the, um, um, the uh, right away there in that uh, going on that example you couldn't tell what was going on. I've seen it beforehand, so I know it's uh, a push in the back. So uh, push in the back prior to the ball arriving at the contest. So that was a free kick. Yep, outstretched hands. I guess the you know the, the, the trigger that makes you uh, think that there could be a free kick there is that you can see that the player in front can't contest the ball unless he's jumped forward and um, and really like looking for a free kick. Um, then there's a good a probability that he's been pushed out, which you can see the outstretched hands, which means that he has. So, yep, spot on, mate. Uh, always pays to be able to have looked at the, um, the video beforehand. Adrian Truant, you want to unmute yourself? You've got a mate there with you, have you? I've got a baby in my lap, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. Well, um, good dads can do two things at once. So, uh, see, uh, see how you go here, mate. <clears throat> All right, did you catch it? Uh, yes, so this guy looks from before, uh, so it's uh, holding on. Uh, it looks like he didn't pick up the ball, and the is it the Nord player held on to him? Yep, uh, I don't know if it's North player, but yes, yeah, certainly the, yep. the player didn't take possession of the ball, was grabbed, held off, and pulled out of the contest. So, yep, spot on. Yep. Well done. And uh, you can get back to looking after your kid now. Thanks, um, <laughs> all right. Pat Lally. We might have been yep. able to see you first, but yeah, you can have a go, mate. The next one. What do you reckon, mate? Poor opportunity. I have a feeling, yeah, he's had a prior opportunity and they've paid hold the ball. So he was the tackle was legal. He had a little bit of a chance to get rid of it, didn't. He kind of just fumbled out. So holding the ball. Yep, spot on. All right. Now you can thank Makita for giving you a heads up there. Now Makita, because you jumped <laughs> in, you can have the next one. Thanks. <laughs> All right, you got the tricky one. Oh, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Can I see it again? All right. And uh, how are you doing, Makita? Last day of isolation after having COVID. You feeling better? Yeah, yeah doing very well, thank you. And uh, thanks to everyone else for thinking of it. All right, here you go. Taken out of the contest. I believe the ball was there, but the, the player didn't have the ball and got taken out of the contest. Uh, I, I have given you the tricky one. It looks like it from here, because I've got it only a phone, it's pretty hard and it's dark. Yeah. yeah. But um, oh, if he went oh. to grab the ball, but he didn't have the ball and it was taken out of the contest. Um, yeah, I might get you there. Have a look at the, the vision later on. I reckon there's a different answer there. Paul Smitheran, you want to unmute yourself? Yeah, good day, Cole. What do you reckon on that one? 
Uh, yeah, I think the I think it was the South player, was it, or the Glenelg player? I think it was. Anyway, he was. Um, there you go. Yeah, Glenelg player had his eyes on the footy over the footy, and um, the South player came in and basically got him high, slash in the back. All right, so that's where these are tricky. Um, I can see why you said that. I actually reckon that's taken the knees out, uh, contact below the knees. I reckon that's a free kick against the Gunnell player. Um, so with the Pretty contact tight. below the knees, we want him to keep his feet. He's, he's gone to ground, Ooh. smashed into the South Adelaide's legs players. The legs are flipped up. They're really hard ones to get. Um, yeah. So thanks, yeah, that was thanks that. For that one. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I gave you the hard one, but uh, in my opinion, that's uh, contact below the knees. But contact below the knees are really difficult uh, because you, because I guess your first instinct is a bit like Paul is protect the player going for the ball. Yeah. Um, but the the rule was brought in because um, yeah to to protect the player um, players legs um, and to encourage them to keep their feet. And if you see them go to ground and the, the player coming in has their legs taken out, that's where the free kick is. It's it a really tricky, tricky one to, to pick up. Uh, yeah. jo Josh Warner? Yep. You got number Mm. Uh, first tackle doesn't stick, um, so I can't be holding the ball. Second tackle is coming. I don't know what's going on with the audio there, but I could make out that you were uh, saying it was holding the ball. You're right. Uh, clear for opportunity, legally tackled, um, ball spills out. And uh, Jimmy Rowe, before he started playing for the Crows, was um, done cold. So all good. Uh, all right, let's run through the rest of the video. So again, the messages are you know, direct in what happens. Um, concentrate on getting into the right position. Be reactive with your decision making, proactive with your running. Um, if you can see the footy there, you can see that um, he's had a prior, legally tackled, doesn't handle or kick, so good holding the ball. Um, reminder, you must be able to see the ball player's head and shoulders, have that drilled into your head so that when you can't see the ball player's head and shoulders, you move quickly. So in that case there, it's just front of contact and obvious and blatant free kick. Protecting the ball player. Keeping it simple. In that case, the North player doesn't have possession. Um, pulled off the ball. These type of free kicks just stand out. No, they don't go looking for free kicks. Hold the whistle and let the play unfold. In this case here, the player just jumps in it. He makes a half harder attempt at the end to look like he's trying to get it out, but he, he, um, he caused that um, stalemate by just jumping on it, not knocking it clear. So good holding the ball. Um, getting 20, 25 metres away gives you the peripheral vision and allows you to see the obvious and weight and high tackles. As we were saying last week, a lot of talk at AFL level about those type of high tackles at the moment. Really difficult for AFL umpires because of the amount of AFL, um, uh, AFL players who are um, not only uh, gentlemen, but a whole lot of uh, AFL players are dropping their knees, shrugging their shoulders. Um, making it really difficult for the umpires. Um, we don't have that problem generally at our level. So um, we just need to make sure we get the angle to see um, the high contact and protect the ball player. If you do notice any particular players, you know, that are finding a way to draw high tackle free kicks, you can specifically say to them uh, that you're aware of what they're doing and um, give them a warning and then you can call play on in those scenarios if you notice it's the same player doing it. But I don't think it's a major issue in our footy. So um, 
yeah, I think in most cases we're safe to just keep it simple. All right. Um, when we react, it doesn't quite make sense. When we react, it must be obvious and blatant. Uh, that's a very obvious high tackle. And yeah, one that one that we need to pay. I, I mean, I, if people want to know my thoughts on the, uh, the genuine free kick and the uh, Essendon Collingwood, just I thought what they want at AFL level at the moment, that was umpired really well. Um, that's not to say we should be doing what they did. Um, Jennifer is, is an example of someone that's finding a way to draw high tackles and he's dropping his knees. Even in that case, he dropped his body to draw the free kick. So they're making a statement at AFL level, but it's not something that we should be worrying about. Um, if you think it's starting to become more prevalent in our, in our competition, let me know. We'll start as a video. I just don't, I, we want to keep things as simple as we can. AFL umpires are really earning their money at the moment. They're under a fair bit of pressure. Um, okay, must err on the side of our ball player when there is doubt. So, and I guess this is the, the point. So in, in, in looking at high tackle free kicks, if it's a 50-50 call, we pay the free kick for the high tackle. Um, when you have a player like Ginevan and others at AFL level, when there's a 50-50 call, they are erring on the side of not paying now. So they're getting their message across. If you're going to stuff around and, and try and um, fool us, we, we, we're not going to reward you. So, I'm, you know, it's, while it's hard for the AFL umpires, um, I think they're coping with it pretty well at the moment. Um, but it's not something, as I keep saying, should be affecting the way we go about it. For us, our players are generally, we've got to protect the player first of the ball. So in this case here, he just lands on his back. So um, it's a good ball player free kick. Again, we want to make position to be able to see those type of free kicks. So hold the whistle, let it unfold and react only to the obvious. So they're the the key messages. Uh, any questions or comments on any of that stuff? All right, pretty quiet crew today. Any uh, anything else before we wind up? Jeez, all going too smoothly. All right, guys. Um, First and second year umpires, uh, bring your whistles out on Wednesday night. We'll do a uh, uh, another session with skills. Uh, for the rest of you, can enjoy running around with Si, mate. Uh, and we're back to obviously Div 1 footy this week. Um, yeah, be a, lot of, a fair few appointments. Um, and the women's finals um, uh, for all divisions, Div 5 starts this week. So, um, yeah, good time of year to, to be involved. All right. That's all. Catch you Wednesday.